Apple may be banned from making the iPhone 16. They're being forced to make some big changes, whether you like it or not. With the announcement of a potential Apple Watch ban here in the United States, Apple has lost total control on what they can sell and what they can't sell, but it doesn't stop there. More and more countries and governments are cracking down, telling Apple what they can or can't do, which is about to lead to a breaking point where Apple might just sort of throw in the towel and just stop making stuff. Right now is a very dangerous time for Apple. They can either comply and give in or risk it all by being a bit shady and maybe even breaking the law. This is a story way bigger than the Apple Watch and could spell disaster and maybe even the end of the iPhone. I know it sounds crazy, but hear me out. Let me explain. Now this whole Apple Watch being banned story is a very interesting, but also rapidly evolving story. And there's a very good chance that something will change by the time I sit here and record this video to when I actually go and publish it on YouTube. And there's a good chance that maybe Joe Biden swoops in, he saves the day, he saves Apple and he vetoes this court order. But there's also the possibility that maybe Apple does something else. Maybe there's a bit of a shady backroom deal or some other arrangement is made that'll stop this ban from going into effect. But really the fact that this is even on the table at all, the fact that it actually could go through for any amount of time is sort of crazy to think about right now. Now the crux of this issue is a not so favorable ruling that Apple got from the US International Trade Commission, basically saying that they violated patents from medical company Massimo for their work on unobtrusive blood monitoring on the Apple Watch. Not only did the court find Apple guilty here, but there have been an increasing amount of rumors from alleged former Apple employees who say that the conspiracy here goes deeper than that, that Apple knowingly hired away top executives from this Massimo company, basically doubling their salary to get them at Apple, to basically steal some of their work and secrets to make the Apple Watch better, knowing they might have been breaking the law. This is all alleged, so I'm not gonna say it's gonna get happened one way or the other, but that is what's being talked about right now, that um, Apple's less than above board business practices may actually now come back to sort of bite them in the butt. And really this whole story is crazy for a couple of big reasons, is that one, Apple really never gets in trouble, so to see them sort of have a guilty verdict and not be able to win this court battle is a pretty big deal. Also the fact that a ban could be happening at the busiest shopping time of the year and make you unable to buy, at least officially from Apple, an Apple Watch Ultra 2 or an Apple Watch Series 9 is really crazy. And the third thing that's crazy about this is that it seems like Apple really hasn't put up much of a fight. I'm sure there's been some court stuff behind the scenes and Apple says they're actively working on this, but the fact that it's gotten this far where a ban could be imminent is sort of crazy. I feel like the old Apple under Steve Jobs probably never would have been in this situation. If there's some big tax or regulation or some rule that's put into place that Apple doesn't want to follow, they've been known for either buying their way out of it or breaking the fine and paying the penalty, basically using their hundreds of billions of dollars. But now we're seeing this increasing resistance to Apple, resistance from governments, from EU regulators, from courts, to even frustrated users who are saying no. Apple's not always right. They can't have a monopoly. They can't do this. They can't do that. People are sort of uprising and fighting back against Apple. Something we've really never seen before and it's really becoming a big deal right now. What's also interesting here, whether it's a coincidence or not, is the fact that Apple has recently lost a lot of top executives on the Apple Watch team over the past couple of months. Mark Gurman just pointed this out the other day over on X. And this isn't to say these two are directly related, but he makes the point, I think rightfully so, that if those people were there today, they would probably be the ones fighting this battle to make sure an imminent Apple Watch ban would never be on the table. And there's been a lot of discussion on how Tim Cook is handling this. Many see him as as a very stoic figure. He never likes to sort of get into tuffles with anyone, though he's known behind the scenes for being a pretty shrewd negotiator. This time he's not putting up much of a fight. Or Steve Jobs, on the other hand, love him or hate him, the guy certainly had his flaws, but he'd probably respond more like Elon Musk in this moment, telling governments to basically go F off and um, they can stick their regulations and their rules where the sun don't shine. And if we sort of zoom out and look at the bigger picture here, it's not just the Apple Watch ban that's sort of crazy here. Not only is this sort of unprecedented, 
but we've started to see Apple make a lot of unprecedented moves lately because of all this pressure. I mean, whether Apple wants to admit it or not, I don't think USB-C was ever on the iPhone's roadmap, at least not immediately, but now because of EU regulations, they've switched the entire iPhone 15 series and most of their accessories over to USB-C. There's also the whole third-party app install thing happening in the EU that you gotta believe that Apple does not want to comply with and they do not want to make this happen, but they've already said they're going to comply. And in 2024, at least in some parts of the world, sideloading apps on your iPhone is actually going to be a real thing, which is crazy. And then there's more regulations under talks right now, one of them being removable batteries. Like you could actually have user replaceable batteries on an iPhone, which you better believe as well, Apple does not want to happen. Apple sort of in a tailspin right now. They want to build these products, they want to do their own thing, but they keep hearing no, no, no to so many things, which sort of begs the question, why is this happening and what's Apple gonna do? On one hand, maybe they just sort of drop their tough guy facade, the, the we know best attitude, and they build what governments want. USB-C port, fine. Side loading apps, sure. You want rem removable, replaceable batteries? Okay, it is what it is. Maybe Apple just makes these products that fully comply and that's what it is. Maybe there's a bit of spark and innovation and excitement lost, but Apple does what they have to do to comply with all these laws and rules and regulations and what they've got to do to sell devices. And maybe that leads to the downward spiral of the Apple walled garden. Maybe iMessage opens up, maybe Apple makes an Android phone. They could definitely shift in one radical direction and just do what they've got to do, listen to laws, and we could see some pretty crazy different Apple products that may or may not be to our benefit. On the other hand, they could maybe choose a different path that maybe is like Willy Wonka. Maybe they go totally closed in, they go full vertical integration, and they sort of tell all the governments and regulators and everyone else that they can go do their own thing, pound sand, Apple's gonna do what they wanna do, even if it means breaking some laws, paying some fines, they're gonna stick to what they wanna do, whether people like it or not. While this could be a riskier path, maybe this does lead to better Apple products. Maybe if Apple just wants to build the products they wanna build, this could lead to better, faster innovation. This could lead to some crazy good iPhones and accessories. This could be incredible. Maybe it's the portless iPhone. Maybe it's other really cool features and Apple's gonna do what they wanna do even if that means some potential fines or bans, or maybe they can't even sell iPhones in certain parts of the world. Maybe because the EU has all these strict rules and laws and Apple doesn't want to comply, maybe they just say, no, we're not going to sell iPhones in the EU. And um, yeah, that's just the position we're going to take. If the US says no Apple Watch Ultra 2 or Series 9 on sale, fine. Apple says, forget that market, we're gonna go somewhere else. There's definitely a business case to be made here that path one is much better than path two. But I mean, look at where Apple's at. They've got a huge amount of money in their war chest, hundreds of billions of dollars. They're worth an incredible amount of money. They could afford to lose billions of dollars. They could make some radical decisions that may not make their devices available everywhere, but could lead to better devices. And if Apple really wants to truly build the best devices possible, if they're more concerned about building the iPhone and AirPods and Macs they wanna build and not worry about what people think or say or anything like that, they could truly do that. Might not be the best business decision possible, but again, if any company in the world can pull it off with their connections, with their war chest, with their innovation and drive and determination, it's Apple, bar not. It's gonna be very interesting to see how this plays out and what this could lead to later on. So I'm curious, what are your thoughts on this? Do you think Apple's in the right or in the wrong here? Do you think that an Apple Watch ban or a ban of any Apple product around the world is a good thing or a bad thing? Do you think Apple should be more aggressive in fighting this stuff? Should they build the devices they wanna build? Should they fall in line and sort of uh, do more universally accepted things like USB-C and replaceable batteries because that's what consumers want? Bit of a interesting, controversial, touchy subject. So let me know your thoughts down below. As always, I appreciate you guys watching. Thank you so much for your support. I am Robert Rosenfeld from the Apple Circle. I'll see you all in the next one.